What's going on, Dub Nation? You're watching Warriors Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Smith here, filling in for Chase Sr. once again as he is on vacation. And today, we are going to analyze the entire Golden State Warriors roster following the free agency moves and trades that they have made this summer. We're going to get into potentially why this roster could change in a little bit. But before we dive into this entire new Warriors roster, I want you guys to predict something for me. As constructed... With the moves that they've made so far this offseason, not moves that they may make, predict the Golden State Warriors' record for the 2024-25 season. I'm expecting a wide range of answers here in the comments section, so drop it down below. Let me know what you think about how GSW is going to do this year. So, to set the stage a little bit for how we're going to analyze this roster, as of now, Laura Markkinen isn't a member of the Golden State Warriors. There is no indication that a trade is close, but we have heard rumors that Golden State is still trying to make an effort to land Utah's big man. And as of right now, you really have to just judge this Golden State roster for what it is. And that's a roster without Laurie Markkinen. And here is the potential starting lineup that I have kind of crafted here. This is not coming from Steve Kerr. This is not coming from anybody uh, from the Warriors brass. This is just from my brain right here, the projected starting lineup for 24-25. You got Curry at the one, obvious. You got Draymond at one of the big man spots. Obvious. Those two are locked in as starters. Then Jonathan Kaminga on the wing. I feel like after the conversation that he had with Steve Kerr last year about his role, about his playing time, he's obviously a lock for this roster. And then I felt like Brandon Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis had the right to start. With the work that they've done this offseason, I think with the Team USA Select team, with the summer league run that they were given, to keep them fresh and, and to see where that they've kind of grown ber, uh, versus playing in Summer League last year uh, against this year. And and they seem like they are the direction that Golden State's heading in, right? They're going with the youth. They have these young players who have shown a lot of promise. And Brandon Pajemski, Jonathan Kaminga, and Trace Jackson Davis are the, at the forefront of the next era of Warriors basketball. You look at the numbers uh, as to what Brandon Pajemski did last year. Yeah, they don't jump off the page. Yeah, they might look like Draymond Green's numbers at age 36. But... At the end of the day, he showed immense growth over the, uh, over the entire regular season as he gained more of a role. Steve Kerr wasn't afraid to play him. He played 26 minutes a night at the most of any real young player in their first or second year for Golden State. And Jonathan Kaminga obviously took that big jump, like I said, when he talked to Steve Kerr about what role he was going to play on this Golden State Warriors roster, he, he upped his game, and he ended up this, uh, averaging 16 points on the year. And yes, that three-point number has to improve, but it was improving when his role did. So it's, it was glad to see the volume increase kind of coincide with an efficiency increase as well. Jonathan Kaminga, a great attacker at the rim, great two-way defender, and just a guy you're going to want to see develop over these next couple of years for Golden State, as well as Trace Jackson Davis, who had a really solid rookie season. I mean, these look like... Kevon, Kevon Looney's numbers uh, with better rim protection for most of what when Golden State has had Kevon Looney for. And plus, when you're putting in the, the ball in the cup at a 70% clip, that is a great sign for a Warriors offense. That's going to need a lot of easy looks. You know, you, 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 ha you take a lot of threes. You add Buddy Heald. You got Steph Curry on the roster. Brandon Pajemski takes a bunch of threes as well. You're going to need some easy buckets down there. And Trace Jackson Davis is the perfect lob threat and rim protector. Kind of a textbook big man with not real big man size down there for Golden State. So I, I, I like to see Trace Jackson Davis kind of get in the mix, be in that starting lineup, and Steve Kerr kind of go away from the small ball. But I struggle with this starting five. I didn't really know what the end-all, be-all result is going to be. There's a good number of players on this roster that have the opportunity to start. I don't know what Steve Kerr is going to do. Is he going to stick with the small ball? Is he going to keep the veterans in the lineup uh, like he did for most of last season? You know, kind of ushering Moses Moody down the rotation, putting Andrew Wiggins, giving him a bunch of big minutes. Is Steve Kerr going to do that? I'm not so sure. But if you look at the rest of this Warriors roster, there are a ton of other players that have the capabilities, have the skill sets, have the resumes to be able to start on this roster. Buddy Heald, who you bring in and pay a bunch of money to, as well as DeAnthony Melton, who you paid the, the entire mid-level, uh, full mid-level exception to. And then Andrew Wiggins and Kevon Looney. You never know. If Steve Kerr wants to start a, a true big in the, in the lineup to start the next season, maybe Kevon Looney is the answer in there over TJD because he trusts him more because he's been in the system longer. I would disagree with that move, but it's a possibility for sure. And then the same thing with Andrew Wiggins. Are they going to favor putting him in the lineup to be a little bit bigger 
Uh, and then move Dray Draymond Green to the five, and then still have Pajemski and Kaminga in the lineup. Are you going to put Pajemski on the bench to be that backup ball handler to run the second unit? Are you going to put Buddy Heald in the in the starting lineup? There's a lot of questions that Steve Kerr needs to answer because a good portion of this roster, you know, players ranked three through nine, uh, the the gap between them is pretty minimal. And you know, as far as what this new age Warriors roster is going to do, I'm really not sure. And my rationale throughout this whole thing is, if you don't make a big Laurie marketing trade, if you don't mortgage your future and send a, a, a bunch of young talent to Utah or to a third team or however the trade might work out, that means you're investing in your youth. That means you are have a clear direction at where you're going. And that's, unfortunately for Steph Curry, with the young talent on this roster. You're going to be thinking about a future with Brandon Pajemski, Jonathan Kaminga, Trace Jackson Davis, and whoever you pick up over the next couple of seasons because... Let's be honest, uh, a lineup that focuses on that might not be too focused on winning a championship over the next couple of years. They're mostly focused on player development and potentially who could they who they could bring in in future seasons. But at the end of the day, you still have this guy in the lineup. You still have him here. Everything still revolves around Steph Curry. So when you're thinking about the direction of this roster, do you make a Laurie Market and trade? Because this is the guy that you're trying to please. Look at the numbers that he's put up. He's... Uh, why, why do I even say put it, look at the numbers that he puts up? Everybody knows this guy's a top 10 player, borderline. It, it, I know everybody watched this video thinks he's a top 10 player, but a bona fide top 10 basketball player of all time. This is a guy that you honor, that you respect, and that you put rosters in front of in order to compete for the last couple of seasons of his career. Because if you look at his last year, he's still playing at an elite level, still shooting over 40% from distance, still notching almost 30 points a night. And you you just can't disrespect Steph Curry with this new ushering uh, of, of an era of Warriors basketball where you're not putting a championship roster in front of him. But another player who has been around the mill for quite a while and another guy who I'd argue you need to honor a little bit is Draymond Green. Can he still be effective in this lineup Getting closer to 40 than he is to 30, Draymond Green been putting up about the same numbers for the last couple of seasons as you could expect from him. And yeah, I, I think you're still going to get these numbers from Draymond Green. Are you going to get the switchability on defense that he's been able to provide over the past decade? Probably not as the years go on, but you can still trust him to guard most fours and fives and be available when he's not, you know, assaulting people on the basketball court. That's always something you have to worry about with Draymond, but at the end of the day, he's the heart and soul of this team, and he's going to start, and he's going to be a bit, he's going to play a big role in on a Steve Kerr-led basketball team, whether you like it or not. So, with that, let me ask you this question. We've gone through the five guys who I think are going to start. What is your ideal Warriors 2024-25 starting lineup? Let me know down in the comments section. I'm curious, because I've, I've seen a ton of lineups that people have suggested uh, down in the comments on previous videos. I want to see where your guys' heads are at. Let me know down below. As far as off-season acquisitions that this team has garnered in, Buddy Heald is at the forefront of those. The Splash Buddy, as they're calling him. And with Buddy Heald, like I said, he's got a real chance to start on this roster. There's a, definitely a world where they go out and start Steph Curry, Buddy Heald, uh, Andrew Wiggins, John of the Kaminga, Draymond Green. It's more of a small ball lineup. Or you move Kaminga and Green up and then put a Trace Jackson Davis in there as well. Buddy Heald has as good of a, ch a chance to start as anybody that Golden State has brought in over the past couple of seasons. And if you look at his last couple of seasons, there's good reason for that. He's one of the league's elite shooters. You brought him in to kind of be your quasi Clay Thompson replacement. And him and Steph have, I think since 2017, hit the two most threes in the entire NBA. So obviously you're bringing in a sniper. And Buddy Heald's very excited to come and play with the Golden State Warriors as well. Here's what he had to say about playing with Steph said, Steph, he's the one, and this is a question where he was asked uh, if he's ever felt like he's not been the best shooter on his team, what player would make him think that way? And he said, Steph, he's the one. I've been watching all my life. I'm a sponge, ready to learn, ready to watch him, see how he goes about his shooting mechanics, the way he goes about how he works on his routine. I think it's going to be an interesting year for me just to learn from him and see how he goes about himself, his professionalism. I think it's fun. I'm excited. I'm excited for Buddy Heald and Steph as well. Their duo has been dubbed by fans. This is actually something that I just read up to on today. I, maybe, I, maybe I'm late on this, guys. But they've been dubbed the Splash Buddies. I'm excited to see this duo work. They're going to provide a lot of spacing for the Golden State offense. And it's one of those situations where, you know, Buddy Heald was one of the guys who 
who's left in the free agent market kind of after the Clay Thompson dust settled. He gets lumped into that five-team trade, obviously, but it was just a, ne a necessary acquisition for Golden State to make a Buddy Heald pickup because you lost so much shooting with Clay, you're going to need to replace it somehow, and there wasn't a ton of already established catch-and-shoot threats on this roster that were borderline knocked down from deep like Buddy Heald is. So he made the move, and I think it's going to pay off for Golden State this year. And then the other two off-season acquisitions, De'Anthony Melton, who I'm fairly excited for, uh, barring his health, and hopefully he can stay healthy, and then Kyle Anderson. And I'd expect these guys to get pretty decent minutes on this Golden State squad because you paid him pretty decently. I mean, you, if you think about Buddy Heald, you gave him a four-year contract, and that is worth $38 million. So you're paying him basically $10 million a year. Then if you look at DeAnthony Melton and Kyle Anderson, you're paying them both borderline $10 plus million a year too. And if you think about the way that the NBA works now with the new CBA, it's going to be the top you know, top 10% of guys who are getting paid $30, $40, $50 million a season. In some cases, 60 with some of these new contracts that are being signed. And then you know, for basically the role players, they're going to be getting these deals that are mostly around 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 million dollars a year, and then obviously anybody else is going to be basically relegated to um, minimum contracts and taxpayer mid-level exception numbers, things around single-digit millions and, and what have you. So you have these guys, and you're paying them a good bit on your payroll. I, I, I'd find it, I'd be hard-pressed to see the Warriors not playing these guys big minutes. The Anthony Melton last year dealt with a plethora of injuries, so that's going to be very interesting to see work out. But when he was available for Philadelphia. He can put the ball in the cup. He can shoot the ball at a fairly efficient level. He was, he's been better in previous seasons. And he can also defend. He's also going to give you a good defensive ability and good instincts for, at the guard position. That's something that Golden State has lacked, the, to be honest, in their backcourt over the past couple of seasons. Last year, Chris Paul didn't really give you the defense that he had for most of his career. And DeAnthony, Elton's, DeAnthony Melton is going to give you that spark on both ends of the floor. Kyle Anderson, kind of the ultimate facilitator, right? Draymond Green-esque numbers, in a sense, averaging that triple single. But he, he's a really underrated facilitator. Um, if you put a throw him at the high post, he's going to find shooters on the outside. I think he's just a really good ball mover to have that would fit really, really well in this Golden State offense. So these two players, I really do think, are going to get a decent number of minutes. And Buddy Heald, like I said, could start right away for Golden State if Steve Kerr ends up making that choice. What do you guys think, though? Who are you most excited for? Pick a new Golden State Warrior that you're rooting for, that you're excited to watch play basketball in Golden State down in the comments section. If it's Buddy Heald, give me a BH. DeAnthony Melton, type DA. And Kyle Anderson, type a KA as well. All right, I want to tell you guys about a sick deal before we get to the rest of this Warriors roster. Steph Curry is leading the boys in blue and red to gold in Paris at the Olympics, and you can get his jersey right here at chatsports.com slash CurryUSA. It's a great deal. I'm thinking of uh, buying one, rocking it here on the show. So if you want to match me, if you want to be dripped out and support your boy Steph, go out and get this Steph Curry Team USA jersey. It could be the only opportunity that you have to get one because Steph may not play in an Olympics again. This could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get some good merch for your boy Steph. So pick up this Team USA jersey today at chatsports.com slash CurryUSA. I'll put that in the comments and description of today's video to make things easy for you. Chatsports.com slash CurryUSA. As for our returning rotation pieces, some of these guys I mentioned earlier could end up starting, like Andrew Wiggins and Kevon Looney, and then Moses Moody and Gary Payton II. As far as just running down the line here, going on Andrew Wiggins, Golden State, we know, they've been open about moving him. We've talked about potentially trading him in a deal for Jared Allen, packaging him and Moses Moody, sending them to Cleveland. Cleveland's had interest. Um, Golden State has been open about their willingness to trade Wiggins, and they didn't really envision him being on the roster heading into next season, but with each passing day, it's looking more and more like that's the reality, and it's kind of unfortunate because Andrew Wiggins just isn't the same player that we saw play from 2021 to 2023, and you know, he, ever since he took that sabbatical in the 22-23 season, things have just really gone downhill for Andrew Wiggins. His defense has fallen off a cliff. I mean, we saw him defend Jason Tatum in the 2022 finals at one of the highest levels that he's ever played at, or one of the highest levels that any defender on the wing has had on Jason Tatum. And now you see him falling off in both on the defensive end and the offensive end. His efficiencies are the worst they've been over the last four seasons. And I just don't think you're getting the same player that you used to have with Andrew Wiggins in the lineup. And then we go to Moses Moody. 
He's been at the center of all the, of the Golden State's Laurie Marketing trade offer. We know that the current offer that's out there to the Utah Jazz to the, and to the public is a deal that centers around Moses Moody and a plethora of draft capital, whether it be first-round picks, unprotected, protected, some swaps in there potentially as well. Uh, but Golden State has dangled Moody in a ton of trade talks as well, and that's pretty expected, right? If you look at what he did last season, I mean, he only played 17 and a half minutes a game, and that was after he kind of begged Steve Kerr to play him more and increase his role. Eight points a night. He's a good 3 and D wing who you can throw out there and, and rely on on both ends. So not a guy who's necessarily going to be a needle mover, but just one of those guys who you need in the, in the rotation to be able to survive in the today's NBA. Two-way wings, two-way guards are what sells in today's NBA, and Moses Moody is one of those guys. It's just unfortunate that Golden State has had him in trade talks for so long that's left his role uncertain. And then lastly, or not lastly out of that group, but third in that group, not sure how much Looney's going to really play, right? Um, Golden State went to the buzzer with him as far as uh, guaranteeing his money for this season, and they wanted to include him. They were waiting on that to include him in the Paul George trade, so I'm not really sure how much Kevon Looney will factor in to Golden State's pursuits this season. I mean, you look at last year, he dropped off basically from what he had been producing in years prior. Uh, he used to be a seven-rebounded up guy, and now he's dipped below that. And you never really get the best interior defense from Kevon Looney. Yes, he knows the system. Yes, he can operate at the top of the key, running dribble handoffs, good screener, good roller. So, yeah, I understand that. But it, it just seems like he's going to fall out of the lineup. His, his minutes dropped last year as Trace Jackson Davis got more comfortable. And uh, I could see TJD really taking the real first true big role over Kevon Looney this year. And then who knows? With Gary Payton Jr., right? Will he even be available? Will he be healthy? Uh, I'm not sure how much he's going to play, but I will say the backcourt really does still need that tenacious on-ball defender. Brandon Pajemski is a good, not great defender. I know he takes a lot of charges. Steph Curry, we know how he is as a defender. It's it's good, not it's good, not great, but he always can't exert 110% on the defensive end because he carries so much weight on the offense. But Gary Payton Jr., yeah, one of the best defending guards in the NBA. And uh, I, I'm not sure how much he's going to get into the rotation, but he's still on this team nonetheless. Picked up a $9 million player option, and he's a really good guard defender. Just comes down to how healthy he can be and how available he can be for Golden State. And that's really not that's really why I didn't have him in this projected bench unit for the Warriors. I had DeAnthony Melton here, Buddy Heald, Moses Moody, Kevon Looney, and Andrew Wiggins. And, you know, it's interesting about the starting lineup is there's really no great, great ball handler here, great dis, uh, distributor for these guys to go and score the ball, the ball. So maybe it's an it's a thing where Buddy Heald does enter the starting lineup and then Projemski does lead this second bench unit. But if you're looking at this five on your screen right now, I doubt that we see this unit often. I doubt, I doubt that we see that exact five out there often, if at all. Like I said, doesn't really have a, a facilitator, a ball handler out there to make things easy for those guys. And I think that lineup would really struggle if it was thrown out there on the floor. So at the end of the day, um, I don't think that unit is going to be out there all at once, but they are going to kind of pop in and be those guys that are going to supplement that starting five and get those buckets off the bench because they're, they're, they, they do all have roles out there. And then as far as the guys who are going to be at the end of the bench or not even on the bench potentially, Lindy Waters the third, Daquan Plowden, who got that deal after playing really well in Summer League, and then Quinn Post, who they traded back into the draft, trading out of the draft, to go get um, at pick 52. And then Pat Spencer and Reese Beekman uh, also occupy some two-way contract uh, roles as well. And then my overall take on this roster is that this Warriors roster is actually very deep. Like I said, there's nine guys who you could comprise a starting lineup out of, but that's always not a good thing because, in my opinion, it lacks the top-end talent that you need to contend in the Western Conference. I mean, you look at OKC, look at Minnesota, look at Denver. Um, yeah, I'd even argue like the Kings. The Kings are better than Golden State right now. They already eliminated them from the play-in this year, and they only got better adding DeMar DeRozan. So there's four off the top of my head. Dallas, obviously adding Clay. Um, I'm just naming teams off the top of my head that I think stack up better as Western Conference contenders in this Golden State Warriors roster right now. And that's why I think they, they need a move. They need to make a move for Laurie Markkinen to increase the ceiling of this team and probably increase the floor of it too. They need a secondary reliable score next to Steph, and I think Markkinen is, unfortunately for Golden State, since they have to deal with Danny Ainge in negotiations, 
he's the only guy out there that can really elevate this roster and be a reasonable trade to make at this point with him being kind of dangled in trade talks. But with that, let me see what you guys have to say. Grade the Warriors roster as constructed, A, B, C, D, or F. I'm going to give you guys my grade in just a moment. But I want to see what you guys have to say down in the comments section. Do you hate this Warriors lineup? Do you love it? Let me know down in the comments. A, B, C, D, or F. Give me a grade. My grade's a C plus. Like I said, I'm not entirely enthusiastic about the fact that this roster lacks top-end talent. The fact that it has questions about who's going to be in what roles, like we talked about, you know, the young guys, are they going to, are they really going to be given the keys to this team now? Or is Steve Kerr still going to play Andrew Wiggins 30 to 30 plus minutes a game and not give Moses Moody the right amount of shine if he's still on the roster? Like there's a lot of questions to be had about this Golden State Warriors roster. And we'll answer those as the season fastly approaches. That's why you subscribe to Warriors Today by Chat Sports, youtube.com slash Warriors TV for all the latest Golden State Warriors news, rumors, updates, Everything that surrounds Golden State, Steph Curry, and the whole crew, you're going to find it right here at Warriors Today.